OK. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm going to talk to you uh, today about the uh, telemetry projects, um, what we think we're going to do in the next cycle. So I'm Julian. Uh, Gordon is there and is going to, to help me to run through this slide as I need. Um, so a quick summary of telemetry, uh, what it does. I hope everyone knows by now because we are getting pretty old as a open stack project. So we do metering stuff in OpenStack. We gather metrics, uh, we store them, and we try to provide them as a useful data to do any kind of magic, like, I don't know, billing, capacity planning, prediction, any kind, and alarming. Uh, we are made of free service, so that used to be four, but the news is that one of our service left OpenStack. Uh, that would be Gnocchi. So the main services that remains in telemetry are Silometer, the oldest one, which is responsible as of now to gather the metrics from all the OpenStack components and put them into some data store, which is by default Gnocchi. Uh, hey is the uh, alarming engine, uh, which is responsible to either um, do things based on the, whatever threshold has been uh, uh, reached by a metric or execute an action based on an event, a notification sent by any of the other OpenStack components. And the last piece is Penko, uh, which is the uh, service that stores the events, the flux of events coming from the different OpenStack services into a database and providing an API to access them. Um, so the project was funded during the Grizzly release, so uh, I'm lazy. I used the template provided by the foundation, which put a lot of nice information on that, so pretty cool. Uh, we're officially, I counted, we're 50 contributors uh, for the last cycle. That's the number of people that committed something uh, that I counted, but we're actually free doing 80% of the work. So since a few cycles, we have less and less people contributing to OpenStack, mainly due to uh, the amount of com uh, people uh, sent by different company that left OpenStack recently during the last cycle. I'm sure everyone is aware of that. So um, it's mainly managed by me, uh, Gordon, and Media Bakuk, who's not there today. Uh, the last resource of adoption number, I don't have any comment on that. It's a number reported by the foundation of a user survey. Uh, it seems that a lot of people are using it, but we don't have much information on how and why. So if you want to give us some insight, it's a good time to do this at the end of the talk. Uh, so the new feature and enhancement for Pi. So it's pretty hard to, for us to say anything about that because we are free. and We don't always plan way ahead what we're going to do because when you have uh, only a few developers to maintain four projects, free in telemetry plus Nuki, where we do spend a lot of time, it's pretty hard to gather in advance requirements and things you're going to do. So one thing we've done so far uh, for this cycle is to uh, deprecate the collector of telemetry. So the good thing is that it's going to reduce a lot the load that you see on your uh, RabbitMQ if you use that as a backend. Um, it's currently all the messages, um, or many of the messages, passes on RabbitMQ maybe twice if, if the information comes from notification. So that's going to uh, be stopped by this if you stop using the collector. So now the agents are going to push directly the data into uh, whatever backend you use and not go through the collector. So it will be removed in the next cycle if nobody complains about that. Uh, we added a new Zocker publisher, so in the same spirit, not going through the collector, we use directly publisher to publish data from the agents, pulling the data from OpenStack to something else. Here it's Zocker, so that allows you to do things like grab the flux of events from um, any OpenStack components, Nova, Neutron, Cinder, whatever, and that goes through uh, the RabbitMQ, and that's grabbed by Cinemeter and push into a queue into that car. So then your application or your operator application more likely can consume the Dakar feed of events. Uh, as I said, we used to have four projects in uh, telemetry. 
uh, the fourth being uh, Gnocchi, which left uh, a couple of months ago. So it's still a bit there. We are in the process of moving into its own GitHub organization. Um, we moved it for uh, one of the biggest reasons is that Gnocchi works pretty well with uh, OpenStack. It uses uh, Swift for storage if you want. It can use Keystone for authentication. But it's pretty agnostic and pretty generic as it is a time series database. So it doesn't have anything really OpenStack specific in, except that it was born in the OpenStack ecosystem and grew there. But in order to facilitate the adoption outside of OpenStack of the project and to maybe grow its number of contributors, we decided to uh, move it out of OpenStack and see what will happen. Uh, so I had to pick themes for the uh, telemetry pie surely, so I randomly pick a few things I think we're trying to focus, but I don't know, what do you think, Gordon? Does that look looks good? Yeah. Is this what you're going to do during this cycle? Yeah? I'm going to do that not focus. <laughs> not focus? You're good at that, okay. So we're not going to focus on a lot of things. Uh, we are, I mean, I always put like major focus on, on UX because this is something we try to do. Like, when one of those projects trying to have good defaults, like by default, if you install Nyoki or Cinometer, it has to work. I mean, we like our DevStack plugin is pretty small because we don't configure a lot of things in DevStack. You just have to install it, and even without any configuration file, it ought to work by default. I'm not always it always true, but it should be. Um, we we don't we don't put a lot of uh, focus on scalability I think in this release. Um, we improved a lot of things with tools, uh, the way we do the um, balance between the jobs in the different collectors, um, agents in uh, Cinemeter. Uh, but that's mainly things you can't see as an end user or maybe as an operator because it will be more solid. When you deploy, it will have less likely to be um, to crash or anything. But it's, there's not a lot of uh, user or operator visible feature we do in this release. Uh, in Cinemeter, mainly because the project is a bit complete in terms of features so far, and also because we are we have just enough resources to maintain the project and to reduce the technical debt. So putting new features and new things to manage is a bit out of our scope in a lot of projects like AI or Cinemeter. Uh, same thing for Queens. I think we're going to move a bit from uh, the resiliency to the scalability mainly. We did, uh, we did a few tests. I did a talk on Tuesday about Cinemeter and Yoki and run, using them to pull and make meters uh, 10,000 instances. Uh, so we did that uh, with Alex Cruz from Red Hat to see how far can go Cinemeter and Yoki. And we did it a few bottlenecks, uh, which is why I think it will be too late for Pike. Maybe for Queens, we'll be out of time and resources to tackle a few of the scalability issues we might have in uh, Cinometer itself to pull. Like, it can be pretty slow to pause, and when you have a lot of instances or any resources like networks or volumes or whatever to pause, uh, it might be a bit slow uh, for Cinometer to do and to generate the right amount of events in, the, in a good time frame. <clears throat> uh, these are, the, like I said, the possible features we might work. Uh, so the better scalability, like I said, for the agent, we might be a bit, a bit uh, slow. Uh, there's a lot of work to do for anyone interested in A um, or alarming engine. It's pretty simple. It works. It, it does things like uh, compare threshold against metrics and raise alarms or whatever. But it's not that efficient in the end. There's a lot of, inf in, if, of optimization that could be done. I think we know, some, we know that for a long time, but we don't, don't have any resources or developer working on that for the last cycles. So that's not very good. I'm not sure we'll have time and resources to work on that, but that's something we have in mind. Uh, like I said, UX is pretty important for us. So we have a long list of things to do uh, to improve the documentation. Like uh, when we started Gnocchi four years ago, we had this um, no doc, no merge policy which finally uh, worked pretty well because the project is the, uh, the best documented one we have in telemetry. Uh, the doc is pretty accurate. Everything is explained in the doc. Uh, every time somebody adds features in your key, he has to write the documentation with it. So it allows us to make sure that the feature is easy to be consumed by the user and that the documentation is properly written by someone who 
wrote the code, so we can compare both and say the doc is wrong or the code is wrong. Uh, but we don't do that yet for the uh, over telemetry projects uh, such as Cinemeter because there's such a huge gap between uh, the state of the project and the documentation, which probably covers only a small part of Cinemeter, but it's pretty hard to say to developers, your feature is nice, but you need to write the doc when the doc is pretty empty. So uh, we, don't, we need to, to catch up on that. It's a long process to do. Uh, someone needs to just start watching the non-existing documentation and rework everything. So we moved the install guide, I think, last cycle into the repositories. That's the first step. Uh, we need to merge them in one single documentation at some point. Yeah, yeah, so we have the same information twice. <coughs> Use the install guide by the doc team because the way it was uh, back then is was the doc team was written, responsible to write the documentation and the developer <coughs> was supposed to write the code. That doesn't work very well. Uh, so now we need, we need to merge back everything into one document, which is a, a huge task um, that nobody is taking care of uh, really, I think, so far. Except you, like, from time to time, you, you move things around, but it's, yeah. Uh, error release themes, no ID, we found some spot on that, but uh, I mean, it's pretty hard to, to know what we do in this cycle, in next cycle, so in two cycles, it's pretty hard to, to know anything, so this is just a boilerplate template that I left here, but I really don't know what we're going to do. Uh, so we need your app. I think that's pretty obvious if you want telemetry to, to continue to, to free and to have new features and fancy stuff. We definitely need more resources. Uh, I mean, the project is not going to, to disappear anytime soon, but, uh, but it's pretty hard to have big things to announce every summit, every six months, when you only have a handful uh, of people working on the project. Uh, we also have feedback, so we know that a lot of people are actually using uh, things like Cinometer in your key, but it's pretty hard to uh, gather feedback. Uh, we, we expect and we hoped uh, to, to so that week as a summit uh, would have been a good opportunity to gather feedback. So far, I did have some feedback from a few people uh, operating your key and Cinometer at scale, which was pretty interesting, but we're always glad to hear about that here uh, during the summit or at any time. I mean, we use the OpenStack dev mailing list and we are pretty easy to reach. So if you have anything you want to ask us or to discuss or to learn about telemetry, we had an onboarding session earlier this week, which was not really crowded. <laughs> but uh, I mean, we do onboarding all the year, so don't worry. If you want to just show up at some point and help us, uh, we'd be happy to, to have you on board. And this is it. It's a small project, so not a long presentation. Uh, anything you want to add, Gordon, before I start, I start asking you who wants question? Sure. You want to take the mic? <laughs> so the, that polling stuff you're mentioning, when you did the benchmarks with Alex, yep. was that with the, the libver polling stuff that we added, or was that against no API? Oh, for the Medi, polling? Uh, Medi added the feature where you can, instead right. of polling Nova API, we I, lo I don't think it was used in this case. Okay, so yeah, it's because probably it was better, not. hopefully better. We can probably test that against benchmark. What? Like the new bench, like if we did, if we did a sub subsequent benchmark, we could probably use the libvert polling instead of. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 I mean, we, we need to use it, but it was not available when we did the test with Alex. So okay. it was upstream and master, but not the version we used. So I don't think, so. I don't think it was uh, set. I check with Alex, but uh, we might need to do more benchmark on Cinemeter with that option. Any other question? Yep, sure. So um, I primarily use it um, as a source of information for another monitoring system. Um, so we'll just let it do the collection. And that's sort of how we view it. Um, <clears throat> originally implemented that around Ice House time frame, or maybe, yeah, around there. Mm -hmm. And at the time, the only way to get the data out of it, both events and meters, was to write a dispatcher plugin. And actually, we still have that today, although at some point it's split into two plugins. But um, I guess dispatchers, it sounds like, will probably not be a thing uh, moving forward. Um, yeah, so the dispatcher are part of the collector that we just deprecated. So the new way of pushing things is not to go through the dispatcher, which 
Uh, if you go through the dispatcher, you have to go through the agent to the dispatcher of the RabbitMQ, mm -hmm. which is usually a problem, so we just decided to duplicate that. So if you have a uh, dispatcher code, uh, it's pretty easy to adapt it to be you know, a publisher. So publisher is exactly like a dispatcher, except that it's run by the agent directly. Right. So it's just a layer above uh, of what used to be the collector. So it's not a big deal. You just have to yeah. adapt your plugin to that. that new that's code. fine. We're kind of planning on that. Um, when when do we have to do that? When is so uh, in this spike release, it's going to be marked as deprecated. Okay. So your dispatcher will still work, mm -hmm. and unless we get something big, I think we can remove it in one cycle, two cycle. I never remember how long is the deprecating period. Like it's two cycle. Officially, it's one cycle. Okay. okay. So we might remove it in the next cycle. I, we don't really care if we remove it or not. It's not like a big piece of code we have yeah. to maintain, and there's no like bugs or anything in it. So it's not. There are some bugs like memory consumption, which can be pretty heavy. Or, but uh, people that deploy it, since it's deprecated, we can just say it's a. We know it's a problem. Just it's deprecated, so stop using it. So, uh, we might wait two cycles to remove it. We're not really in a hurry or anything. But, but uh, it's got all the same functionality now in the publisher, I imagine. Yeah, yeah it's, it's exactly the same thing. Because I mean, that was the only issue in the past. I think was the events were missing from that, so um, I kind of had to do it that way. So yeah, but no, it's uh, okay. it's also a publisher for events, so it's oh, not a big good. deal. All right, thanks. That was the impression I got. It was only able to you know, kind of consolidated, but it was a little confusing because, it, it, yep. again, the documentation issues. It's, it's like a lot of times I wasn't 100 percent clear what process these things were going to be evaluated in. You know, so it, it, it's a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of work there. But it's, it sounds like the architecture is a lot simpler moving forward. So. Yep. Cool. Anyone else? Thank you. Um,